we have seen. Da, 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 da. Hey, all of you wonderful people. Thank you so much for joining me back in the shed. We have been very fortunate and caught a little break in the temperature, so it's very possible to film out here right now without melting. I'm melting! I think melting is the word to use. It's been really warm, so it's been uncomfortable. That's why you've seen a couple of different on-location shoots where we're doing projects in different places. And that's probably going to be something that we continue to do, but that's not why we're here today. Today we're going to be talking about the future of 3D printing and what I personally think it's going to look like. When I started my 3D printing journey just over five years ago now, I would have never thought that it would have evolved to a point where I could print things like this Deadpool statue without support material. Heck, even back then, support material was intimidating. Most everybody was optimizing models to where you didn't need it, and I would have never anticipated the amount of quality models we would see between then and now. Personally, I started on an overpriced, in hindsight machine called the TiVo Tornado. The feature set was lacking, but one thing that it did do really well was it was huge. Huge, huge, huge. I never took advantage of that build volume. Back then, everybody was just trying to get their machines bigger and bigger and compete with the Creality CR10, which is Creality's machine that really kickstarted their whole thing. And back then, resin printing was in its We'll call it hobby grade infancy because resin printing has actually been around longer than FDM printing. So we didn't know what the future of 3D printing would look like. In the handful of years that I've been involved in the community, we've seen a ton of growth. We've seen dozens of new filament manufacturers, dozens of new printer manufacturers, countless failed Kickstarters or scam Kickstarters, however you prefer to say that. And all of that has got me thinking recently, what does the future of 3D printing look like as of of today, July of 2023. Well, I think to look towards the future, we really need to look strongly at the present and what is the focus? What is happening in 3D printing right now? As of the moment, Bamboo Lab has been just absolutely crushing the game. They've released the P1S as their most recent machine iteration, and it seems to be super popular and gaining a lot of attention. And that's kind of prediction number one for me, is Bamboo Lab is establishing themselves as a key player in the 3D printing game. They're putting up a pillar and I think that they're going to hold their spot and realistically, I think our new big three in terms of printer manufacturers are going to be Prusa, Bamboo Lab, and Creality. Bamboo Lab is the newest of the three, but they came out of the gate swinging. So likely what we'll see in the coming years from them are going to be bigger machines, more versatile machines. Goodness, we might even see them do something with a resin machine. Now these are, these are all my predictions. I don't have any insider information. I don't know anything that you don't know yet, but what we do know is they've been filing patents and there are several new machines in the pipeline, so we'll likely see bigger, smaller, and everything in between from them. And personally, I'm here for it. I'm really excited to see what exactly they have cooking up next because so far, my user experience with Bamboo has been fantastic. And I think that they're going to continue to learn from past mistakes, what shortcomings they've had with things like using models without permission for marketing. That's garnered them quite a lot of backlash. Or recently, they have kind of merged the entire Soft Fever fork of Bamboo Studio without notifying Soft Fever. That's a whole thing, but I think that as they continue to grow and evolve as a brand, they're going to get smarter and fix some of those things. Prediction number two is Core XY is officially a mainstay at the hobbyist level. So for a really long time, we were aspiring to get the speeds and intricacies of a Core XY 3D printer and a more budget-friendly package. Back in the day, the only options for Core XY were kits, things that you had to do yourself, or similar motion patterns. We had things like Rat Rig and Voron in their early stages, and then we had machines like the HBot, then there's the BLV Cube, and these are all going to be kind of more advanced, and they're hobby level machines. Now I get that they're not all Core XY, but they're 
kind of similar form factors, that cube style of kind of go fast printers. But now we're seeing Core XY really seep into the mainstay. Now, a couple of years ago, Sane Smart released their Coreception machine, which was a consumer level Core XY machine. But I don't remember hearing a lot about it. I do remember the 3D Print General did a video on it, and then I kind of never heard about it again. But Bamboo Lab has taken the Core XY concept and they have just kind of pushed it right back into the forefront. Now they're not alone in that. The Voron 3D printers have just absolutely blown up in popularity. So I don't think that kit style printers are going to be going away, but I think more companies are going to start answering the call on Core XY 3D printing. In fact, as a response, or maybe they were working on it before, I don't know. Creality has released the K1 and K1 Max, their Core XY Speed Demon 3D printers that are going toe to toe with the Bamboo Lab machines right now. A handful of months ago, Artillery, best known for the Sidewinder lineup of 3D printers, has also teamed teased Core XY printers because they were doing a naming contest where if you submitted your name idea for them, you would win one of the printers. Now, I haven't actually seen any announcements on what's happened with the printer and where it's at in development, but based off of them doing a naming contest, we know that we can expect more Core XY from them. Prusa is doing some Core XY stuff with their printer wall for print farm situations, and then there's the Prusa XL, which was probably after the Mark IV, the most anticipated 3D printer in history, if I had it to guess. That machine garnered so much hype and attention, everybody wanted to see it in action it, because it was a departure from the norm for Prusa. They've typically done bed slinger printers in the past and it was something new and it was exciting. And it still is because now that these machines are shipping it in the wild, more and more people are getting their hands on them. And then we're starting to see as time goes on, we'll get some of the tool changer variants of those out in the wild. and. And that's really exciting. So Core XY is here to stay. And I think that every manufacturer is going to have a Core XY 3D printer in their lineup within the next year, year and a half. Prediction number three is one that really excites me. Personally, I think that the direction that 3D printing is heading is absolutely the right track. Machines with a fit and finish style, fully enclosed out of the gate, like the Bamboo X1 series and the Creality K1 series are really what we need to see more of. Now, companies like Raise 3 d have been doing it for a long time, but those are prohibitively expensive for most of us in the consumer market. Now, the reason I'm touting the K1 and the X1 Carbon is those machines look like finished appliances. And what the prediction is, is I genuinely believe that within the next 10 to 15 years, there will be a 3D printer in every house, very similar to a microwave. 3D printers are becoming more and more finished looking and less geared at hobbyists, tinkerers, nerds, and makers, they're being more geared towards the every person. We're seeing wider, wider reach. Bamboo did an excellent job when they launched the K1 of putting a machine into the hands of pretty much anybody that was a content creator at the time. So we're seeing a really wide range on who's receiving these machines. And we have videos on YouTube showing off how can these machines improve my life? So personally, I think companies like GE, Maytag, LG, anybody who's making appliances like your stoves, washing machines, dryers, things like that, they're going to start releasing their own models. I think that in a handful of years, when the knob on your stove breaks, instead of having to get a hold of the manufacturer and have them ship you a $4 part and $15 shipping, or heaven forbid, have a technician come out to change out a knob for you, I think these manufacturers are going to start doing some uniform things and make the part available for you to download and 3D print yourself to do your own on the fly repairs. And to me, that's really exciting. Because what it means is home repair will become more accessible than ever before. You can already make things like tools and drawer pulls, things like that to help augment and improve your home. We just recently did a video about upgrading your kitchen with 3D printing. We're working on a video right now as we speak about upgrading your bathroom with 3D printing. I've showed you before 3D prints that you can do to level up your workshop. And that's where the appliance like nature of these new generation machines coming out comes into play. People are going to be more excited to have something in their home that is safer for children because the enclosure means that little hands, little grabbies, 
can't get into touch the hot moving pieces or get fingers pinched in the motion system. And you're also getting machines that are just ready to rip out of the box. I know that I tout how much I love my P1P because of how easy it was to set up and use, but that's what it really is going to take for 3D printing to reach that next level for home users is accessibility, lower barrier to entry in terms of cost and ease of use, and then just user friendliness. The more user friendly that a machine can be from beginning to end, the faster we're going to see more adoption. Now that doesn't mean that the hobby side of 3D printing is going away, but it does mean that you might see grandma 3D printing something in the near future instead of asking you to do it. And that's really exciting to me. My kind of last prediction in terms of where the 3D printing industry is going now is going to kind of tie back to prediction number three. I think that 3D printing is going to start becoming more of a focus in schools. It's no longer just a little niche thing because so many people are involved. There are people who are running businesses, both small and massive with 3D printers. And now we need to teach the kids in school how to use these things. And with that, we're going to need more 3D printing centric education in the school systems. Personally, when I was in high school, 3D printing was a newer concept at a hobby level. And we, we did have a machine in my school, but it was only available in the precision machining program for the kids that were becoming machinists and learning how to become CNC operators or using manual milling machines, lathes, things like that. So the rest of us students didn't have any access to these machines. And I'm hearing stories about more and more schools adopting a 3D printing curriculum because it's going to augment our lives. This is becoming relevant now because it's going to become a part of our daily lives in the future. So that's it. Those are my 3D printing predictions for the coming years. I'm really curious to know in the comments below, what are your top 3D printing predictions? Where do you think that the industry is heading? What do you want to see happen in the industry? Let me know, let's have a conversation about it. I really wanna hear your thoughts and opinions on this one because the future and growth of 3D printing is something that's excited me since I got involved in it. As always, thanks for sticking around. Make sure you drop a like, give a comment. And if you like this type of video, be sure to subscribe because we're always trying out new things and talking about new topics. Thanks for hanging out. Happy future printing.